So, good afternoon everyone out there. Uh, we're very excited today to be able to present a crude oil webinar and I, and I think will certainly be uh, valuable to all our viewers out there. I think we're fortunate we've been working with BVG now for, for quite some time to see how can we evolve the participation of our crude oil markets. And uh, obviously with the presence of Harrod and Andre here today, thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, all the effort that's gone to the BBG team to be able to make this day possible. Now the important point is that today is phase one. There is a very exciting installment phase two that will happen in April and we've got more details right at the end of the presentation about that. But I'm going to hand over to Harrod. Thank you very much again for your time. Um, we, we're looking forward to questions as they come through on the webinar so please don't be shy. And uh, there is an exciting installment. Andre has shaved for this event, so he's looking very smooth and slick for that. So thank you very much. Over you too. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Harald Lovskafni. I'm from BVG, and I'll be presenting today's webinar on trading of crude oil on the JSE. So the other day my wife complained to me that I never take her to expensive places anymore. So last night I took her to the filling station to fill up her SUV. Needless to say, neither of us found it very funny. Uh, on a serious note though, diesel and petrol prices are at record levels. Last I checked, uh, WTI crude was trading at $90.60, the rand was trading at 917 and yeah, business and the consumer is really hurting. Well, we hope that uh, after today's webinar, um, you, our audience, will see opportunity in higher oil price rather than fear rising oil prices and the effects they have on your business. <coughs> Excuse me. We will um, start off by giving some background information on crude oil and uh, what influences the price. And then we'll move on to uh, more of the practical side on how to go about trading it. And we'll end off with Q&A. So let's get into this. Um, Significance of crude oil. It impacts every aspect of our daily lives. It is the most consumed commodity in the world. In 2011, global consumption was 88 million barrels per day. That amounts to $8.4 billion per day, or just over $3 trillion annually. Um, to put this into perspective, uh, if we look at this graph of GDP for 2011, 2012 actually, excuse me, uh, just to benchmark, Argentina <coughs> and South Africa both around the $400 billion annually. Australia about three times that much, and Germany at 3.6 trillion US dollars, Germany being Europe's largest economy. Crude oil, unrefined, just below German GDP. Now think about it. GDP is the entire economic effort of a whole country's population. So you've got probably about 50 million Germans working 8 plus hours a day, 11 months a year, and the value of all they produce is about on par with the value of crude oil produced in the world. Clearly, crude oil is very important in the global economy. Now, whilst new production sources are continuously discovered, oil is a finite resource, and we're burning about 80, 88, 90 million barrels per day. Now, also, it has been said that crude oil has a PhD in global economics. Crude oil tends to be a leading indicator, and it's a great gauge of economic activity. What's crude oil? Well, what does it look like? We've got a picture there. The color may, may vary, but mostly it's a brownish viscous liquid. It's named in terms of origin and classified in terms of 
gravity and acidity, light versus heavy, sweet versus sour. Um, just on the origin, obviously Oman comes from Oman, Dubai from Dubai. Uh, Bonnie Light is from Nigeria, named after the export terminal there. WTI, short for West Texas Intermediary, that's from the States. And Brent is from the North Sea. Um, interestingly, Brent is named after the Brent Goose in accordance with uh, Shell, who developed the oil field at the time, they had a policy of naming all their new fields after birds. It is the most actively traded commodity globally. Just yesterday on the CME, WTI traded about uh, 400 million barrels, which is basically just over four times global production. That's just WTI trading on CME. I'm not even mentioning Brent traded on ice and oil traded on any other exchange. It's quoted in US dollars per barrel, one barrel being equal to 42 gallons or almost 159 or 160 liters. Now, all, all, all oil prices are based of two international pricing benchmarks, WTI from the States, Brent from the North Sea. Um, what we mean by it is priced off a benchmark, for instance, Oman, oh, excuse me, Oman will trade at, for instance, a premium of $2 per barrel to Brent. So if the price of Brent is 110, Oman will trade at 112. If Brent moves up to 115, Oman will move up to 170. Um, let's just quickly have a look at um, where our uh, oil reserves are located. As you can see, almost half the world's re proven reserves are located in the Mideast, um, which, at the best of times, tend to be a volatile region. Getting back to uh, Brent and WTR, they used to trade close together. However, in the past two years, a significant spread has opened up between them, as you'll see in this graph. They used to trade very nicely together until about September 2010. Initially, WTI actually traded at a premium. It's a slightly better grade of crude oil. However, Brent comes from the North Sea. It's an aging oil field requiring lots of maintenance, and there are um, frequent unscheduled shutdowns for maintenance, placing short term supply under pressure. WTI, on the other hand, is from the United States. With the discovery of uh, shale oil and the ramp up in production of the uh, supply glut has formed and that has driven up the spread to a record of $26 in January. Our view is that that spread will close closer towards $10 toward the end of the year. Now everything starts off with uh, crude oil. Just think of your daily lives. When you wake up and you brush your teeth, chances are the toothbrush, the plastic, was made from some kind of oil derived polymer. Your breakfast food was probably bought from a store and that food was delivered to the store in a truck using diesel. If you have a meeting down in Cape Town, you're flying down to Cape Town for the day, you'll fly in a jet using jet fuel, it will take off from a runway coated with tall or bitumen. Well done in Cape Town, if you're fortunate enough to dine on fresh fish, chances are fish was caught in a trawler powered by bunker fuel. So basically we've got oil coming in on one end of a refining process and different derivatives coming out the other end. Uh, petrol being lighter, jet fuel, diesel and all the other. If you have a look at the graph on the right, you'll see that there is a very close correlation between the price of crude oil in black and all of the derivatives. Now in South Africa, um, unfortunately, we don't have any crude oil of our own, so for the majority of our fuel, liquid fuel needs, we are dependent on imports. That means, excuse me, what that means is that uh, we are fully exposed to the Rand dollar exchange rate and the US dollar price of crude oil. Now, 
South African crude oil consumption in 2011 was 200 million barrels. That's 0.6% of global production, amounting to 143 billion rands. That's a lot of money. And uh, almost 5% of GDP. Wow. Most crude oil consumed in South Africa is in the form of liquid fuels. Now, due to often large transport distances, fuel expenses can make up a very significant part of total business expense. And having a means to affect savings there can be a critical business element to consider and can be a great competitive advantage. The ability to trade crude oil provides us, and I'm very pleased to say, we are able to trade crude oil right here locally in South Africa on the JNC. What drives the price of crude oil? Well, fundamentally, it's driven by supply and demand. <coughs> As with basically any commodity or financial instrument that is traded. Um, gro global growth will imply more consumption and hence higher prices. Now, we also say that uh, the demand side tends to be more price elastic than supply. What we mean by that is that because oil is such a crucial economic input, the supply side is very inelastic. Whenever there is supply disruptions or even a rumor of supply disruptions, the price of crude oil tends to move up very sharply, very quickly. When we see uh, demand erosion, the price of crude oil will come down, but it tends to come down at a much more gradual pace than it moves up on any supply shocks. Oil is a very volatile commodity, and the volatility is mainly caused by short-term short issues, and it is very headline-driven. Case in point is, uh, I believe, 29 June last year, in the midst of the European debt crisis, when it looked as if the euro was going to fall apart, uh, Angela Merkel announced that uh, Germany will support efforts to uh, protect the single currency and following her comments the price of uh, crude oil shot up by 7 cent in a single day. Speculators are often uh, blamed for uh, driving up prices. They can have a short-term impact on the price, although we believe um, this is often ex exaggerated. The following plays an important role in affecting the price of oil. Current global economy, well, if the economy is going along well, if it's picking up, you've got uh, strong demand uh, underpinning the price or even pushing prices higher, and vice versa. Supply and demand balance supplies. Supply and demand is in uh, a very fine balance. And whenever we see the loss of anything more than 300,000 barrels a day, the price of crude oil tends to move significantly. During uh, the Libyan civil war, which saw the demise of uh, Colonel Gaddafi, uh, we lost about uh, between, two, between two and two and a half million barrels per day of Libyan crude production. And uh, during that time, the price of crude oil went up by 17%. Stockpile levels, every Wednesday, the United States Energy Information Agency publishes um, a report on stockpiles in the USA, the USA being the world's largest consumer of crude oil. And uh, whenever those stockpile levels differ significantly from expected levels, the price also moves very sharply, very quickly. Uh, because oil is traded in US dollars per barrel, the strength of the US dollar is also very important in determining the price. Whenever the dollar weakens, producers of crude oil will, is, will receive less in real terms for their oil, and consequently they will demand higher oil prices. So if the dollar weakens, oil tends to move up. If the dollar strengthens, oil tends to move down. Uh, we've also got uh, numerous industry reports out on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis giving indications of 
supply and demand current as well as forecast and whenever the forecast levels change significantly, the price tends to move. OPEC policies. OPEC is a cartel of all producing countries. They produce approximately a third of global production. And whenever they cut or increase supply, the price of crude moves. Geopolitical tensions. As we uh, pointed out in the previous slide, about half the world's oil reserves are in the Middle East. It's a volatile region and you know, escalating tensions there tend to push up the price and when, whenever we see a decrease in tension, the risk premium tends to decrease. The good news, um, prior to 2009, there was no platform for trading crude oil in South Africa. However, since 2009, it has been possible. In 2009, SAFEX launched the WTI contract, and it allows for the trading of the US benchmark in South African rands. The, as I said, the contract is denominated and settled in South African rands. <coughs> Due to uh, demand, a contract on Brent was launched in 2012. This contract is dollar denominated but settled in rand. It tracks the dollar price of Brent, but on a it moves in a rand per barrel fashion, um, also known as the Brent quanta. On both contracts, there are futures and options available to trade on the JSC. Um, we're not going to get into too much detail in the contract specs, but if there are any questions, uh, please feel free at the end. Now, not all the oil being traded today is for immediate delivery. We've got on a daily basis producers anticipating price declines, wishing to sell oil for future delivery at today's prices. Conversely, consumers fearing rising oil prices buying crude oil for future delivery at today's prices. And the trading of future delivery oil goes up, goes out up to 10 years, but the vast majority of liquidity is located in the first 12 months. Um, the string of prices of oil for future delivery is known as the forward curve. This curve shape is defined by the prices marketplace are willing to transact at. Okay, and uh, on this uh, graph on the right above, we've got the forward curves for WTI in blue and Brent in red. The suffix contract or the contract that trades on the JSC is denominated in red. And if we look at the red denominated forward curves, you'll see that, for instance, the The curve on the brim becomes a lot flatter and the rand forward price tends to uh, increase the effect of uh, the WTI price. Implications of the forward curve, when the forward curve is downward sloping, it is said to be in uh, liquidation. And this could uh, indicate periods of uh, higher demand where people are willing to pay more to secure immediate supply. When the curve is upward sloping, the curve is said to be in contango, and this is uh, typically in periods of adequate supply. Um, also, the contango curve is uh, usually the norm in commodities, because when trading commodities, um, there are commodities for future delivery, there are additional costs involved, insurance, storage costs, etc. Now, hedges can benefit from backwardation, whilst investors can pick up yield from contango. Um, backwardation, we see this graph here, that's a nice backwardation curve. Under backwardation, the forward price is lower than the spot price, and a consumer wishing to 
age future purchases can this at price lower than today's price. The Contango graph, um, the forward price in the Contango market is higher than the spot. And if you are of the opinion that the price will come down, you can uh, short sell at future levels higher than today's price. And if the Contango is more than the interest and storage costs, an arbit arbitrage opportunity may exist. The crude oil market consists of traders, hedges, investors and speculators. Traders act as in intermediaries between producers and consumers. Hedges have risk exposure to the price of oil and use financial instruments to obtain protection against adverse price movements. Hedges may be producers <coughs> or consumers. Producers will wish to insure against lower prices while consumers will wish to insure against higher prices. Investors will use commodities to seek additional yield. Crude oil, the number one trading commodity in the world. Commodity is a recognized asset class and it just makes sense to include it in any well diversified portfolio. It can be great for yield enhancement. Speculators take a short term view on the price and look to achieve uh, short-term returns. And whilst sometimes controversial, they provide much needed, needed liquidity. Okay, so um, basically that was the first part of our uh, presentation, just some background on crude oil. Let's have a few uh, examples on actual trading it actually trading it. Um, the high volatility in crude oil provides potentially better yields compared to uh, traditional alternatives. Um, for example, during the first half of 2012, the Suffet or the JC Top 40 was uh, fairly stagnant. Uh, if you look at the graph over there, not a lot happened in that first six months. 2012. Whereas uh, if we look at the RAND price of, crude, of WTI crude oil, we had significant movements. We had a 12% drop, followed by a 13% bounce, a little bit of uh, consolidation, followed by a 20% drop, and a 25% bounce. It's unlikely um, one would have timed it perfectly, but uh, if one did, there was a 70% for the taking compared to basically not more than 10% trading the top 40. A wide range of investment strategies are possible through the availability of both futures and options. With good liquidity, we've got great market makers on, on exchange and uh, liquidity is, is never a problem. Suffix WTI, because it trades on exchange, provides liquidity and perhaps more importantly, transparency required by institutional investors. Let's have a very brief and simplistic look at an example of uh, trading crude oil. Um, the graph here is uh, a closing price of WTI crude oil brand denominated with a Bollinger Band technical indicator for those of you not familiar with that. A Bollinger Band is simply a moving average in the middle with uh, two bands either side uh, being uh, multiple standard deviations from that. And in this case we use two standard deviations. Now if you believe in mean reversion um, and you trade a Bollinger Band strategy it would make sense for to wait for a break above or below, followed by a break back into the band, and to buy or sell following that. So what we have here is on the 21st of June, the rand price of WTI closed below our bottom Bollinger Band, on the 22nd it rebounded, and one could have bought at 670 rands per barrel. If one then stayed, long of crude oil 
until we had a break back below the bottom end and would have been in that trade until the 19th of September and one could have sold at uh, 7.59 as per barrel. Now that is 13% uh, in just three months. Um, I'm pretty sure that all of you will agree that uh, that's some great yield enhancing uh, possibilities that uh, that would have helped. One could have done that uh, by buying futures, by buying call options, going into a bull spread, um, basically, the, basically the possibilities are, are endless. Um, looking at um, who signed up for this webinar, um, I saw that uh, about two thirds of our audience are probably more interested in hedging, a third more, a third would be more interested in investing. However, um, anyone that uh, went to a filling station on Tuesday and queued for 30, 40 minutes to fill up his tank when it wasn't really empty can be considered to be a hedger. Now, hedging, um, the risk due to exposure to the price of crude oil can be effectively hedged by using the same instruments as investing and um, that being futures and options. In South Afri Africa, the biggest risk due to rising oil prices is rising fuel costs, especially the price of diesel. The rand price of WTI and the price of South African diesel is highly correlated. Um, I'm pretty sure all of you know that whenever we see a weakening of the rand or a rise in oil prices, the price of diesel tends to go up as well. Um, because our oil price is a combination of the US dollar price of fuel and rand dollar exchange rate. Um, therefore, suffix WTI can be used to hedge these exposures. Um, I'll just refer back to a graph that we already showed earlier in the show in the presentation uh, where we see um, the price of the oil derivatives uh, heating oil like diesel, um, gasoline, jet fuel, all tracking the price of crude oil. Now, hedging diesel implies fixing or capping your diesel exposure against current market prices. The suffix contracts can be used to provide a highly effective diesel price management tool. Uh, the South African diesel price is determined by the Central Energy Fund through the basic fuel price formula. Um, the also sale price of diesel basically consists of two components, being taxes and levies. There are more than 10 different taxes and levies, but they tend to be fairly constant uh, and only change once or twice a year, normally following the budget speech. The volatility in the price of wholesale diesel is caused by the BFP basic fuel price component. If you just look at the chart, the taxes and levies, although increasing, tend to be fairly stable, but we've got a lot of volatility in the BFP component. Now let's take a deeper look at hedging the South African diesel price. The BFP and the rand price of WTI are high. Oh, highly correlated, um, correlation of about upwards of 95%. The WTI contracts on suffix can therefore be used as an effective proxy edge for aging South African diesel. Why a proxy edge? Well, diesel doesn't trade on exchange. I don't know if uh, Chris can make a plan with that. <laughs> um, because diesel doesn't trade on exchange, we need to trade something else that will emulate the movement of the diesel price. And for that we use the rand denominated, rand denominated WTI contract. Um, just looking at the graph, you will see that uh, there is a very high correlation between the price of WTI and the BSP. Okay, um, let's have a 
Also, once again, a very short and simplistic example of hedging your diesel. When hedging diesel for clients, um, I must say we, we go through a comprehensive process. We look at a lot of factors, you know, including uh, the amount of diesel consumed, the seasonality involved, risk appetite of the client. But for the purpose of today's exercise, we'll uh, make it quite simple. We will use the same entry point as with our investment example. Um, so if we had a large, say for example, a large transport business looking to hedge their fuel three months out, their diesel, and uh, the financial manager at the company is an avid follower of the markets and he had a Bollinger Band on his graph and he decided I'm going to uh, fix my price because prices are low and I'm expecting them to rebound. He could have bought crude oil on the 22nd of June at 670 rands per barrel. Now, if he wanted to hedge his diesel three months out, uh, he would have had to sell the oil that he bought on the 22nd uh, during August. The reason for that is the price of diesel and petrol for that matter is calculated by taking the average of the previous month's values. So if he sells at the average price during August, he could have sold at an average of 776 rand per barrel. That is a saving of approximately 106 rand per barrel or plus or minus 90 cents per litre. Um, during that period, uh, the wholesale price actually moved up by 84 cents per litre. So uh, that's bang in line uh, for protecting against the rising uh, diesel prices. Um, important to note here, the profit the client makes will go to offset higher prices paid as a fund. Hedging is a concurrent process to uh, diesel procurement. When hedging, you know, we, we don't trade physical diesel or oil here. Uh, we trade financial instruments. So if we hedge the client and the price moves up, the client will pay more for his diesel as a pump. However, he will be making a profit on his JSE account and that profit will go to offset the higher prices paid as a pump. When trading futures, the client fixes his price. So um, that's very important to note. If you, if you bought at 670 rands per barrel and the price declined to 600 rands per barrel, uh, you would have made a loss on your JSE oil trading account. And that loss would have offset the benefit you would have achieved at the pump. Um, when uh, hedging with futures, that may be seen as risky. However, um, all's not lost. There are other instruments available which are less risky, and um, there I refer to options, call options on crude oil. An option gives all the, the right, but not the obligation, to buy at a certain level. So, um, if our cl hedging client bought call options at 670 rands per barrel and we had that nice move up, the client would have made a profit because he has a right to buy at 670, a right he would have exercised. However, if prices declined to 600 rands per barrel, the client would have uh, walked away from the option, it would have uh, basically expired, worthless, and he would have still reaped the benefit of the lower prices at the pump without making a loss on his oil trading account. However, nothing in life is for free. Um, that option does come at a premium, but that premium should be seen as insurance against higher oil prices and consequently higher diesel prices.
to recap, um, it is very exciting that one can now trade crude oil on the JSC. It is a volatile instrument and it's, as such it presents uh, great investing and trading opportunities. You can diversify your portfolio and enhance yield by trading crude oil on the JSC. There's a high correlation between the local diesel price and the rent price of crude oil. You can protect yourself against either higher diesel prices by trading WTI crude oil on SAFEX. You can cap or fix your diesel price and this gives you a massive competitive advantage. That's it. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time. If there are any questions, we'd be very happy to answer them. There are a few questions on the webcast. I think for um, some of the questions, um, I'll also enlist the help of my colleague, uh, Andre Freyev. He did show it, so it's worthwhile getting him on camera. Okay, the uh, first question is from uh, Vishan Velabji. Uh, um, hi, Gerard. With the USA expected to be energy self-sufficient by 2018, what do you expect to be the impact of this newfound energy independence on the global energy markets? In particular, the, in particular, the impact on Middle East producers, if any. And do you expect the risk premium we see on Brent versus WTI crude to possibly dissipate? Mm. Can I pause this one to Andre? Good afternoon, Vijan. Thank you for your question. Um, you mentioned 2018, um, the US being self-sufficient in crude oil uh, needs. At the moment, um, that seemed to be a bit of an optimistic uh, gesture. Um, crude oil uh, consumption in the US at the moment is about 16 million barrels a day. And uh, last week's production averaged about, sorry, 16 million barrels per day. Consumption in last week's uh, US local production um, stood at 7.1 million barrels uh, per day. So we're halfway there, or the US is halfway there. Now, um, will it be self-sufficient by 2018? Well, with all the shale oil that's been discovered, this is a possibility. Now, uh, uh, one major thing about US uh, energy policies is that no crude oil from the US can be exported. So uh, this is basically to counteract the uh, 1980s, the OPEC formation. So um, you know, they could be self-sufficient by 2018. How this would affect the Middle East and the risk premium? Well, usually the risk premium in crude oil is priced in due to um, consumption, not only by the US, but by the rest of the world too. So should there be any turmoil in the Middle East, we would still expect the risk premium to be in the price of, um, of Brent. I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah. Okay, the next question. Uh, what are the steps for hedging my diesel exposure? Okay, um, first of all, um, one would need to identify the need to manage your diesel price risk. Um, then one would need to uh, find a broker that is uh, prepared and able to trade crude on, on your behalf. Um, one would then uh, consult with your broker to determine your specific needs and risk appetite. Uh, and once that process is finished and you're satisfied, you will need to open a JSC trading account and uh, fund that account and then start implementing your aging strategy. Uh, that can be either like a fire and forget strategy so you discussed your plan with your broker and he just implements on your behalf or it can be much more hands-on depending on client preference. Okay, the next question uh, from Anvil Weavers. Uh, if you purchase three months contract options futures, can I exit at any stage before the contract expires? Yes, you can. Um, as already mentioned, we've got excellent liquidity on the JSE, 
uh, provided by our master makers. So whenever you decide to uh, close out your position, you will just phone up your broker and tell him to liquidate, whether it be a future or an option. Okay, and uh, next question is, do you trade physical diesel? No, we don't. Uh, the, the next question, could you explain uh, proxy hedging and, may, and maybe give other industry examples? Um, as kind of mentioned in the interview, uh, proxy hedging is hedging uh, a known risk with a financially traded instrument. And in a South African example that we use diesel, we've used WT crude oil, uh, WTI crude oil to hedge the risk. Now, to use a proxy, you need to show a definite and strong correlation between the risk you want to hedge against and the financial instrument that you are trading. Um, this is not a new um, way of doing things in industry. If you look at American airlines um, and, for that fact, European airlines that do hedge their jet fuel exposure, most of these companies would be using Brent or WTI um, crude oil to hedge their future exposure. hope that answers the question. Okay, the next question from Dion van der Merwe. Why is the WTI contract a better hedge in RSA than the Brent contract? Am I correct in saying that most oil used in RSA is of, of type Brent? Um, um, well, basically, the WTI contract is rand denominated. So, when using the WTI contract, you get exposure to the price of WTI crude oil, as well as the Rand dollar exchange rate. The BFP is dependent on the price of oil as well as the Rand dollar exchange rate. So um, purely for that reason, we like to use the WTI contract for, for hedging. He is right in the, in the uh, fact that he says that our local prices do track Brent more closely. However, the correlation between WTI and Brent is uh, of such a nature that we are comfortable trading WTI for aging purposes. Okay, the next question, uh, how is the SAPEX WTI crude oil contract price calculated? Um, that's basically just the forward price of WTI for whichever contract months you're trading multiplied by the forward rate for the RAND. Okay, the next question. How would a widening spread between WTI and Brent affect hedging? Um, the impact of a widening spread between WTI and Brent will be, most of the time, temporarily um, and would affect the correlation negatively, thus um, resulting in an underperforming hedge. However, one should note that should the, the spread between WTI and Brent close up, you could be dealing with an overperforming edge. So, you know, it goes both ways. Okay, another question from Dion van der Merwe. On slide 14 on strategy, if one acted on buy signal at end of April 2012, position would not have been in profit. How do you manage risk with this investment strategy? Well, when investing, it is always prudent to have an exit plan, whether it be to take profit or to uh, keep a stop loss. Uh, if the client traded futures, uh, he could have just uh, liquidated the, his futures position at the stop loss level. An option would have probably expired uh, worthless. Or if the client was long a future, he could have probably bought a put option at his stop loss level to protect against any further downside movements. Okay, and uh, the next question, can you explain the quanto more? Hmm. Yes, well, so basically uh, a quanto is a financial instrument, instrument den denominated in one currency or tracking a financial instrument denominated in another currency. So basically, uh, in terms of the Brent Quanto, you've got a South African contract trading in rands per barrel, tracking the US dollar price of Brent crude oil. So if Brent goes from
from 110 to 112 dollars per barrel, the suffix contract would go up from 110 to 112 rands per barrel. Okay, and the, uh, uh, well done for Dion uh, van der Merwe for asking all the questions. We've just got one more from him. Uh, what is the typical band of oil option premiums? Um, you know, that, uh, that can vary vastly over a range depending on, uh, you know, what strike you, you take. Uh, add the money, call options for three months out. At current volatility, it's probably around uh, 25 rands per barrel, Andre. 20 to 30, yeah. 20 to 30. Um, obviously, it does come down significantly the further you move out of the money. Great, there are no further questions on the webcast. So I think uh, just from my side, uh, I certainly want to say a very, very special thank you guys. You've done great work today. Uh, thank you very much for the excellent audience out there. We're busy looking at everyone who logged in. It's been, been great. I trust that you found it uh, useful and valuable today. We certainly look forward to your feedback. Uh, the commodities at jsc.co.za email address is always up there. Um, and, and you're welcome to send us an email with your thoughts of today. The BBG gentlemen are certainly always around um, and if I'm not mistaken, there are their contact details on, on, that should be coming through online. They also have a daily and weekly oil reports. I understand you can subscribe to those. Um, and as we all enter the modern age, I think uh, we look forward to your tweets that uh, you'll be sending out. So there's a Twitter account as well. Um, again, hopefully you, you found today very useful. It was just laying the foundation for our next session, which you would also then be able to find uh, you can register online, the web details are there, 17th of April, again another exciting hour between 2 and 3 in the afternoon. And um, yes, we'll have some, a variation of speakers, the topics are there, and we certainly look forward to your participation in, uh, on the 17th of April. Thank you very much to the BBG team, I know you put in a lot of effort, we appreciate that. Um, their contact details are there. And a full list of all the SAFIX commodity brokers are also on, on, this, on the JSC website. So if you want to get actively involved, again, a brief summary is you need to be registered as a client to be able to participate. But thank you very much to the team that's been operating everything so smoothly. Much appreciated. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Happy world trading.